Agent Nation. My name, of course, is Agent Beamstar. Let's get right into the news. So guys, it's been a very interesting last couple weeks. There's a lot to talk about. Let's just hop into it. First things first, rumor reports are saying. Now, this, according to a couple sources I talked to, is verified, but for now, let's just say it's alleged that Giannis is the unofficial cover athlete for the standard edition of NBA 2K18. Now, a couple fake bootleg drama alert videos ago, I talked about how Brian Mazik, we will call him an insider, was predicting that Giannis would be on the cover because of the they will know our name slogan, and at the start of his career, Ain't nobody know how to pronounce his name. It was too many syllables involved in his name. It was very difficult to say consistently, at least if you weren't Greek. So it seems like Brian Mazik's predictions were true, and Giannis will accompany LeBron James as the two cover athletes for NBA 2K19. Did I say 18 before? I really meant to say 19. Sometimes it gets confusing, right? In related news, during the NBA awards, it was announced that NBA Live's cover athlete was going to be no one but Joel Embiid. Easily the most entertaining, hilarious, and now, in the league currently now, my favorite player. He's just so much fun to watch. His shenanigans is always making me crackle up. <laughs> Shout out to him. Now he's gonna be on that, he's gonna be on the cover of NBA Live. And it seems to be like NBA Live 19 is gonna be the best one out yet, just based on the improvements we've seen. So at least for him, an exciting moment. He gets to be on the cover of a game. That's a lot of people's dreams. For our next story of the day, uh, a week or two back, Mike Wang put out a tweet and it caused a stir. I didn't think it was relevant enough for me to drop a video on it, but I was talking to Davis and Phantom and they were mad at me because I voted differently than they did. So let's talk. You've probably seen it already. This is what Mike Wang said. Been seeing a lot of comments about this. Curious what the rest of the community thinks. On a scale of one to 10, how are Katie should park play be reply and tell me what you want park gameplay to look like in the future now in my vote i said eight and i actually replied saying please bring back opponent voice chat on parks too i was just playing around obviously that's all something we want back but that is exactly what troy dan wrote so i figured i'd just copy and paste his comment for comedic purpose some people were mad i didn't vote 10. can we be clear on a scale of one being real life simulation to 10 being all the way arcadey which also means 10 being NBA Jam, being NBA Street, I don't want the game to be no 10. Listen, I love NBA Street and NBA Jam, but there's also a market for a sim basketball game, or at least a semi-realistic looking basketball game that's fun to play. If you voted 10, you have no idea what a scale really is in actuality. A scale is two sides of the extreme and everything in the middle. I want Park to be like fun. I want them to throw crazy alley-oops and get exciting blocks. I want there also to be a skills gap so it can be competitive. Just cause arcadey doesn't necessarily mean that the game cannot be competitive. Games like 2K14 and 15, there was an incredibly unrealistic animations and dunks and blocks in that game, but it was incredibly fun to play. No one ever looked at an unrealistic dunk and went, oh, that shouldn't be in the game, man. That's not real life. I know, that's besides the point. Something we could all agree on is we want the opponent voice chat back in the game. That's, that's, that's a massive thing, but it's also a small thing at the same time. For our next story of the day, I watched a video from a channel called Clean Price Gaming. He makes a lot of gaming related videos, and he made a video talking about GTA 5, how successful it's been, everything it did fantastic, but also the things it did miserably. One of the things it did miserably, no doubt, take two own game, was microtransaction. And in the video, he was talking about why take two, whether it's Rockstar, whether, I mean, you could see the references to NBA 2K does very similar things. Uh, Evolve, remember when that flopped because it tried doing very similar things. Take two is one of the only companies in the gaming industry that can use like egregious microtransactions like we see in 2K18, 17, 16, 15, and everybody just gives them a pass. When EA does it, they get battered for it. When Ubisoft used to do stuff like that, they used to get shredded for it, but Take-Two always seems to get away with it. I was watching the video, I just came to the realization, like as, as furious as some people were with NBA 2K18 and the microtransactions, literally people, when they were raiding the game, they were like, yo, the game is solid. Aside from the very boring and gray colors, of course. And the obvious server issues. Let's not forget the server issues. But the reason a lot of people were giving 2K18 poor reviews had nothing to do with the actual game. It was just the microtransaction. I thought that might motivate 2K to, to maybe see that they, they don't need to spam it. We've seen games like Fortnite dominate, make a ton of money without spamming it. 
and making the game pay to win. But after watching that video, I went into a depression and realized that there's probably gonna be worse microtransactions in NBA 2K19. That's my prediction, that's my official prediction. It just seems like he's right. Take two always gets away with it. Who's to say they won't for NBA 2K19? On our next story of the day, there's been a very interesting development, especially in the My Team community. Uh, players like Cash and Los Polos. A lot of people coming back in playing My Team, and it, it's kind of been motivated by a, a common denominator. That common denominator, of course, is new content. Ronnie 2K has been dropping locker codes out the ass. I even got one because a pink diamond rose leaked and someone DM'd it to me and I was like, yo, don't tell nobody I put in the code. I got myself a free, and now I might even want to try my team. As pay to win as that game mode is. So there's been a lot of large creators coming back and playing my team and or team up and people have kind of just been getting hyped about it. That on top of the fact that 2K has been dropping quote unquote new content, new cards for my team, literally every few days. There's been new cards coming out and people begin to get excited about it. If you look through Ronnie 2K's replies and every tweet, it's people begging for locker codes or asking when a specific card is gonna come out. So it's been interesting to see on a game as dry and dead that a lot of people are coming back like, yo, we're really playing this now. People are selling out a lot of money just opening packs trying to get back involved with my team. And to me, this really just means one thing. What I tell y'all about new content, I mean, I know they knew, they didn't need me to sit here and tell them, but you make new content, it's fresh, people are enthusiastic about playing the game. Very, very simple formula, ladies and gentlemen. For our next story of the day. All right, so I don't want you to tell anybody that I told you this, uh, but I've heard it from so many people now and the, the whispers within the community, like it's growing and growing. Here's what I heard allegedly, but it's verified, but it's also alleged that private matchmaking in Pro-Am is confirmed for 2K19. That's what I heard from multiple people, from multiple people. And everybody's been playing Team Up recently. I even hopped on Team Up to troll cash if you missed the video. I'll leave a card above and a link in the description. But what is Team Up really, right? Wouldn't people want to rather use their own jump shots on their own design players that look the way they want them to, that have the features, the height, the wingspan they want them to? Wouldn't people rather have a specific archetype that they enjoy playing with than playing Team Up? If they bring, allegedly, okay, uh, if they bring private matchmaking confirmed, okay, <laughs> to 2K19, Pro-Am will blow up. Ah, oh, fuck. I have no questions about it. As long as the servers can keep up, we don't want, we don't have that east-west issue we had last year. Pro Am is gonna be fucking massive. It's kind of sad that it, it seems like Fortnite is gonna come out with a private matchmaking mode before 2K does. It's like, come on, 2K, y'all are making so much money right now. We really shouldn't have a problem where a free-to-play game is beating you, to, beating you to the chase. All right. On our final story of the day, do you guys remember like a month ago, maybe two months ago, I announced in one of these fake bootleg drama alerts that NBA Playgrounds 2 was canceled. Usually when games are canceled, they're, they, they're never really called canceled, they're called delayed. And when they're delayed, they usually give a future date. So if the game's supposed to come out at August 6th, they'll be like, there's been a delay, the game will now come out December 25th, all right? Usually, that's exactly how it works. But it seems like, we haven't really heard any new information from NBA Playgrounds 2, and so I saw a tweet about it, and I just thought to myself, it's been a minute since I heard some information. I put out some Googles to see if I can find anything, and there seems to be some dead silence about the game, which doesn't look good, which likely might mean, and as time goes on, will be more and more likely, that NBA Playgrounds 2 is probably just canceled. It's probably not delayed, it might not come back in the future, and nobody knows why. The game looked like it was almost complete and or fully complete. It's a very odd decision to go through all of that development, especially all the new features they were talking about, and then to just to just not come out with the game. I mean, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, the only possible reasons I would do that if I was their dev team is one, the game played so horribly bad and was so very horribly optimized that it was gonna destroy the credibility of the developers. Two, pre-order sales were absolutely horrible, 
and they feared that their game was gonna flop. If their game flops, it might be more challenging in the future to go to investors and be like, yo, we're a sure shot, we put out this game, and it banged. The investor's gonna be like, yo, but how about the game you put out after that? That shit flopped, we won't trust you with our money. Two, I don't know, maybe, who knows, I'm just, I'm just shooting here. Or three, this is all just like one big prank and they can come back at April Fool's, April 1st, with the launch of NBA Playgrounds 2. I don't know. But yeah, it's not looking good for the game. If you were excited for it, there's plenty of reasons to not be now. So that's about all the news there is. I'm sure over the next couple months, we're gonna start to hear some absolute heat. Hopefully see some gameplay. 2K might even throw an event or two. Maybe show up to Gamescom this year. Maybe show up to their own event, who knows. And until then, I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video. If you haven't already, drop a like and you click on that little bell when you subscribe on the channel. <laughs> if you haven't done it already, just click the button, all right? It takes two seconds. Come on, I know, you, I know you want the notification to wake you up when you're asleep at 7 a.m. that I uploaded a video. And on that note, I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. If you haven't already, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Put on the little post notification thing. It doesn't hurt. Click on one of these two videos or I'm gonna fight you, all right? <laughs> now just stare at me while these videos sit here.